Senator, thank you. We'll stick with agriculture for the next question. The Iowa State University Extension Crop Specialists say more than 90% of Iowa farmers have crop insurance, which covers roughly 80 to 85% of yield and revenue. But that doesn't make them financially whole after a disaster. Are you comfortable with a crop insurance program that after disasters like a derecho, the drought or uncontrolled flooding on the Missouri River doesn't make a farmer financially whole? And we'll go to Senator Ernst for the first answer. Yeah, you are absolutely right that those programs don't necessarily make a farmer whole. And that's why it's extremely important that we are able to engage, especially as a federal government. I do sit on the Agriculture Committee, again, still living in the rural area. Many of my friends are farmers, my family, farmers. Um, so understanding the difficulties that they are facing. So whether it's a derecho, whether it's a drought, whether it's the COVID-19 pandemic, making sure that we have the appropriate programs and responses in place, whether that's through FEMA, whether that's through the USDA, whether that's through HUD, making sure that we are able to step in in a quick manner and cover down where maybe crop insurance won't make a farmer whole. So those are all issues that I've engaged in in many, many, for many years. And I see the results when it comes back to my neighbors, my friends, and my family. Teresa Greenfield, the same question to you. Are you comfortable with a crop insurance program that doesn't make farmers whole after disasters? Well, no, I am not. And let me tell you why. I've had the chance to tour a damage in western Iowa, all across central Iowa, and all the way over to Cedar Rapids. And as I've talked to farmers, as I've talked at, uh, stopped at co-ops and elevators, uh, and talked to how, uh, them about how they've been impacted, and it's clear there is a gap, and particularly coverage for our grain bins. But the reality is so many farmers are under financial stress uh, in Iowa due to haphazard trade, due to abusive, reckless tariffs, due, due to my opponent's approval of ethanol waivers. Uh, net farm income is down 75% since 2013. Bankruptcy rates are at an eight-year high. And we have got to make better decisions in Washington, D.C. to make sure that our farmers who work so hard, who want their markets back, can earn a profit and provide for their families. My question is a simple ag question. Teresa Greenfield, you answer first. What's the break-even price for a bushel of corn in Iowa this week? <laughs> well, a bushel of corn's going for about 368 today, 369, and break-even really just depends on the amount of debt someone has. I suspect there's farmers that are breaking even at that price. However, if their yields are down 50%, that's certainly not going to cover it for them. Uh, I'll tell you, we've had low commodity prices for too long. And they've been going out of business prices. Senator, break-even price for soybeans for an Iowa farmer to produce. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, I would like to go back to a um, previous statement. Um, certainly with what we have done on trade, we have seen significant strides forward. So the USMCA is a great example of that with our two largest trade partners, Mexico and Canada. Uh, Mexico is the number one purchaser of Iowa corn. We just saw with the China phase one trade deal where China actually made an all time record corn purchase at the end of July. So haphazard trade deals? No, I think we are on the path towards success in these areas. And I have had our farmers, as I do the 99 county tour every year, I've been to all of my rural communities every single year that I have been in the United States Senate. I have had those farmers say, for heaven's sakes, I understand what the president is doing. What I don't understand is why we didn't have a president that stood up for us before this. So I am thankful that we are well on our way to correcting the situation within our trade space. And that was done with a Republican Senate and a Republican in the White House. Well, thank you very much. I, I might have missed it, but I don't think you answered my question. What's the break even price for soybeans in Iowa? You grew up on a farm. You should know this. Uh, I think you had asked about corn, and I, it depends uh, no, on. I asked her corn. It depends on what the inputs are, but probably about 550. Well, you're a couple of dollars off, I think, here, because it's uh, 10.05. So, well, we'll move on to something else. Then. Well, and I, and, and I don't think Ms. Greenfield answered either. Uh, 
She actually did. <laughs> but the price of corn, we'd ask for the price of soybeans from you, Senator. You want to take another crack at it? <laughs> no, thank you. You said could the break even for corn is 1050. I don't think that's correct. Right, that, that would have been for beans. Ron's question was soybeans or maybe to you, I'm not Ms. Hearing. Greenfield, to corn to Ms. Greenfield.